you know, I can't do this forever. I've been doing it since I was 21. As you move into your 80s, you say, hey, that's enough. That's enough. It's hard for me to hear that when you say it. It's hard for me to say it. (laughs) Yeah? Well, yeah. You don't like talking about your end. I mean, who does? Have you watched the famous movie, All the President's Men? It is based on the historic Watergate scandal. Redford and Dustin Hoffman co-star as Woodward and Carl Bernstein. The movie was nominated for many Oscars and Golden Globes, but behind the dazzling career of one of Hollywood's most sought-after performers lies a man with quite a troubling life who has now been married twice. Before we take a look at who he married, let's take a look at what led up to the marriage. Robert's Early Life Charles Redford's father was born in Santa Monica, California on August 18, 1936. He worked for hours as a milkman. In his absence, Redford's uncle David became a father figure. David, a gifted athlete who speaks four languages fluently, taught his little nephew how to throw an American football. However, in 1945, David was killed in Luxembourg while serving with General Patton's Third Army when his Jeep was attacked when it was crossing a bridge. Following his uncle's passing, he grew into an irresponsible young man in Los Angeles who was allegedly a member of a high school gang and stole alcohol for late night parties. The actor of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, however, said that his mother, Martha Hart, was the one who inspired him to make positive changes in his life. I received a lot of criticism, but I didn't receive a lot of support. Redford said to the crowd at the Utah Women's Leadership Celebration of the Sundance Film Festival, What is the reason behind my strong bond with women? I believe that my mother is most likely responsible for this. She was the only one there to support me. Taking everything into account, she just had trust that I had something going for me that would work out well. The actor spoke about his mother as the strong member of the family saying she was very, very adventurous and always had a smile on her face. She was from Texas, and she had that kind of hearty, jovial kindness, he said. She had a positive perspective on things. Sadly, Hart wouldn't survive to see her son's achievements on a global scale as a movie actor, director, and philanthropist. At 40, Hart passed away in 1955. At the time, Redford was only 18. A decade after my birth, she suffered a hemorrhage linked to a blood disorder after losing twin girls at birth. He continued by saying that despite medical professionals' cautions about the risks of becoming pregnant again after his traumatic delivery, his mother was determined to follow her goals. His mother's death seemed so unfair, he said, adding, she wanted a family so badly she got pregnant again. Redford said, I took her for granted because that's how kids were at that age. I regret not being able to thank her before she passed away. His rise to fame. Before we take a look at who he married, let's take a look at his rise to fame. Robert's piercing blue eyes and mop of blonde hair proved to be ideal leading man material, and he quickly began performing in films and productions. Like many famous actors that emerged in the 1950s, the actor's career began in New York City where he found a job on stage and television. His Broadway debut was in a minor role in Tall Story, 1959, followed by appearances in The Highest Tree, 1959, and Sunday in New York, 1961. His most notable Broadway fame was as the uptight newlywed spouse of Elizabeth Ashley in Neil Simon's original 1963 cast of Barefoot in the Park. Starting in 1960, Redford was featured in several TV shows as a special guest. They include Naked City, Maverick, The Untouchables, The Americans, Whispering Smith, Perry Mason, Alfred Hitchcock, presents Route 66, Dr. Kildare, The Twilight Zone, Tate, The Virginian, Playhouse 90, and Captain Brassbound's Conversion, and more. Redford portrayed Alexander Pierce, the chief of S.H.I.E.L.D. and commander of the Hydra Cell that operates the Triskelion, in the Marvel Studios superhero picture, Captain America, The Winter Soldier in April of 2014. In 2017, he had a short cameo appearance as Alexander Pierce in Avengers Endgame before the film's completion. His first marriage with Lola Van Wagenen. So who was Lola and how did she manage to land one of Hollywood's hottest bachelors? Well, 
This is the story Robert Redford and Lola Van Wagenen met in Los Angeles in 1957 when he was 20 and she was 17. A year later in 1958, they married in Utah, where Lola, a Mormon, is from. In an interview with The Mirror, she acknowledged, I was just 19 when we married. I met him in California where we lived in the same apartment complex. Back then he was a young, struggling visual artist who was unknown. Van Wagenen dropped out of college at the age of 19 and came to New York City with Redford, who was performing in his first Broadway play. In September 1959, the couple had their first child, Scott. Redford and Lola were married for just a year when they were struck by tragedy. That same year, their young boy died from sudden infant death syndrome. Redford subsequently said, It was really difficult. We were quite young. I had my first theatrical job, which did not pay much. We knew nothing about sudden infant death syndrome, so as parents, we blamed ourselves. It leaves a scar that never fully heals. The couple had three additional children, two girls, Shauna and Amy, and a boy, James. One can only imagine how the parents felt when their second son, James, got ulcerative colitis and required not just colon surgery, but also two liver transplants by the age of 30. When the initial transplant failed, Redford went on an anxious hunt for a matching organ, which he subsequently described as his worst 12 weeks. Tragically, James died at the age of 58. According to Seven Days, Van Wagenen returned to school in the 1980s after her children had grown up and finished with a degree in American history. She proceeded to further her studies, gaining a master's and then a doctorate. She has been interested in social concerns since she was little. She has worked with a variety of NGOs, including the Vermont Historical Society and Shelburne Farms. In addition to her work as a historian and activist, she serves as the film's executive producer. Unfortunately, Redford's marriage lasted just 27 years, and they divorced in 1985. He has long avoided talking about his marriage with Lola Van Wagenen. He told The Guardian in 2004 that he would rather not discuss it. However, he had already expressed a desire to leave the marriage. I got married at an early age. I don't wish to criticize the person I married. There were plenty of valid reasons. But when you ask me why, I have to tell you that it was to save. He expressed that he finds himself attracted to sadness because he believes life naturally offers sadness and avoiding or dismissing it isn't useful. It's a fact of life like contradictions are. Lola, on the other hand, has made an effort to keep that aspect of her life private. I've tried to be a very private person with a very private life, she told Vermont Seven Days in a 2002 interview. At this point, we have a lot of questions. What are these couples not telling us? What went wrong in their marriage that led Redford to refer to it as save his life? Could it be the pain of losing his mother and children or something else? What are your thoughts? Leave your opinions in the comments section. A whole new life with his second wife. After divorcing Lola in 1985, Robert became more focused on his work than ever before. Establishing himself as a Hollywood heartthrob, and one of Tinseltown's most attractive bachelors until 1996, when he met Sybil Saggers. They met at Sundance Mountain Resort in 1996. She'd come to ski and knew nothing about the actor. In a Young Arts Salon panel in 2014, Zaggers said that when Redford asked her and a group of friends to dinner, she thought, oh goodness, I haven't watched any of his movies. So she went ahead and rented all of his films watching 15 minutes of each over two nights before the dinner, just in case he mentioned them, but he never did. Redford said that he was drawn to her since she knew nothing about him. It marked the beautiful start of a relationship where two individuals met and formed a connection purely as human beings, unaffected by glamour and success. Before their marriage, Redford and his wife spent more than a decade on a 5,500-acre eco-friendly ranch in Utah. He described his wife as a very special person. She's younger than me and European, which I like, so it's a whole new life. 
They ended up dating for 11 years before marrying in July 2009 in a small private ceremony at the luxury Louis C. Jacob Hotel in her hometown of Hamburg, Germany. Their ceremony accommodated around 30 people in attendance, including friends and relatives. Renate Masfeller of St. Catherine Church in Hamburg said that Pastor Frank Engelbrecht officiated at the wedding. He said on their engagement, We are engaged and delighted about it. She's my fiancé. And that says it all, doesn't it? When asked whether his newfound passion is helping him remain youthful, he said, I ride horses, ski, and play pretty hard tennis, so I still have energy. When it begins to shut down, I could start to consider my age. Robert Redford and his wife, Sybil Saggers, have a lot in common. Before we take a look at Robert's so-called secret lovers, let's take a look at what his wife and himself have in common. Redford and Sybil share a deep passion for environmental activism, a commitment that has defined much of their relationship. Together, they have dedicated themselves to the mission of preserving the environment and championing environmental reform initiatives through the platform of Zagger's charity organization. Within this charitable endeavor, Redford holds the esteemed position of vice president, shaping and advancing their collective efforts toward environmental stewardship and advocacy. Their collaboration spans several projects and campaigns aimed at raising awareness, promoting sustainable practices, and fostering positive change for the planet they both hold dear. Siebel was born in Hamburg, Germany on April 9, 1957. In the 1980s, she relocated to London and began her career as an artist. Sibyl traveled to the United Regions in the late 1980s and explored many scenic regions rich in natural marvels across the Southwest and Utah. Sibyl subsequently developed a film titled The Way of the Rain, based on her paintings. When she was younger, her family traveled to Malaysia, Morocco, and Europe, which honed her artistic creativity. In 2013, she collaborated with Icelandic composer and musician David Thor to create a model for a theatrical performance titled The Way of the Rain. This performance included many types of dance, series, light, music, spoken word, and her originally constructed stage backdrop of rain painting skills, which represented the pouring of water from the sky. Pure art's guiding idea is to inspire rather than represent. Sibyl is one of the few genuine painters whose flawless paintings caught the interest of many people. She liked the indigenous cultures and old countries she encountered and felt compelled to immortalize them through art. I'm an environmental artist and my concern is about the well-being of our Earth. Robert's Secret Lovers First up is Sonia Braga. Robert Redford was romantically involved with Brazilian actress Sonia Braga in the late 1980s. Sonia Braga's early life and career trajectory are as fascinating as her relationship with Robert Redford. Born on June 8, 1950, in Maringa, Parana, Brazil, Sonia Braga comes from a culturally rich background, with her family being deeply involved in the arts. This environment nurtured her love for acting from a young age. Braga began her acting career in the late 1960s, appearing in Brazilian television shows and films. However, it was her role in Doña Flor and Her Two Husbands, 1976, that catapulted her to national fame in Brazil. The film, based on the novel by Jorge Amado, was a massive box office hit in Brazil and received international attention, paving the way for Braga's subsequent international career. In the 1980s, Braga expanded her horizons to Hollywood, where she continued to break barriers for Latin American actresses. Her role in Kiss of the Spider Woman, 1985, further solidified her status as an international star. The film was groundbreaking for its time, dealing with themes of homosexuality, politics and human rights, and earned Braga critical acclaim for her performance. She had a short but prominent romance with Redford. Their time together drew the attention of both the media and fans alike, but details of their relationship remain largely private. Beyond her professional achievements, Braga has been a trailblazer for Latina representation in the film industry. Using her platform to address issues of typecasting and the lack of diverse roles for Latina actresses. Next is Lena Olin. She is a Swedish actress noted for her roles in The Unbearable Lightness of Being and Chocolate. 
allegedly had a relationship with Robert Redford from the late 1980s until the early 1990s. Lena Olin, born on March 22, 1955 in Stockholm, Sweden, has a rich and diverse background that contributes to her dynamic presence on screen. Growing up in an artistic environment, her father, Stig Olin, was a well-known Swedish actor, director, and singer, while her mother, Britta Holmberg, was also an actress. This artistic influence from her parents undoubtedly played a significant role in shaping her career in the performing arts. Before making her mark in the film industry, Lena Olin pursued a different path. She initially studied medicine, demonstrating her wide range of talents and interests. However, her passion for acting prevailed, leading her to study at the prestigious National Academy of Dramatic Art in Stockholm, where she honed her craft and prepared for a successful career in acting. Given their celebrity status in the entertainment industry, their relationship sparked suspicion and public suspense. However, like with many celebrity relationships, particular details regarding their time together are not well recorded. Now let's take a look at a longer relationship. Kathy O'Rear was a long-standing partner of Robert Redford in the early 1990s. Robert Redford, a legendary actor and filmmaker, has always been known for his discretion when it comes to his private life a rarity in the often transparent world of Hollywood. His relationship with Kathy O'Rear, though lasting for a significant part of the early 1990s, is a testament to this privacy. Redford's preference for keeping his personal affairs away from the limelight has led to a scarcity of public details about his relationships, including his time with O'Rear. Despite the lack of public details, it's clear that Redford's relationships have deeply influenced him, both personally and professionally. His connection with Kathy O'Rear in particular might have coincided with a period in Redford's career when he was deeply involved in directing and producing, including the founding of the Sundance Film Festival in 1981, which became a pivotal platform for independent filmmakers and served as a significant contribution to the film industry. This is about the filmmakers. This is about their work and us showing their work to you. Well, I think the two, the two categories have come closer together because independent film in the beginning had no support and had very few people in it. Now it's gained and it's gained and, and more uh, mainstream people are going into independent film, so they're coming closer together, which is a healthy thing. The Sundance Film Festival, under Redford's guidance, has grown into one of the most influential independent film festivals in the world. It's possible that his personal experiences, including his relationship with O'Rear, could have influenced his work in providing opportunities for storytellers and filmmakers to share diverse and innovative perspectives, much like his own journey in the film industry. Moreover, Redford's relationships, including his marriage to Lola Van Wagenen in 1958, and later to Sibyl Zagers in 2009, reflect a pattern of deep, albeit private, connections that have spanned his life. His marriage to Van Wagenen produced four children, and their eventual divorce in 1985 marked a significant personal change for Redford, likely impacting his view on privacy and relationships in the public eye. As a consequence, many details regarding his relationships, including those with Sonia Braga, Lena Olin, and Kathy O'Rear are mostly unknown to the public. Retirement from acting. Redford announced his retirement from acting in 2018 after almost 60 years. At the age of 81, he made his last film appearance in The Old Man and the Gun. The actor claims that working on the film aided him in making his choice. To me, that was a wonderful character to play at this point in my life, he remarked of his part. Although Redford will no longer be performing, he may still direct. Months later, he admitted that announcing his retirement was a mistake since it generated too much attention. Instead, he should have quietly exited the acting scene. Redford is considerably older now, and he values things other than his profession. As one ages, he, she learns specific life lessons. You use that knowledge and then you say, hey, I've got a fresh lease on this thing. His current hobbies include skiing, tennis, and horseback riding. With so much enthusiasm, the actor has a lengthy list of things he wants to accomplish, 
and films he wants to do, including thrillers. I like both being afraid and terrifying others, and I want to keep performing, even if I believe the industry has determined that I no longer want to act, he remarked. What do you think about Robert? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.